Chrome ditches mixed HTTPS warnings. Google now and Siri get owned from 16 feet away. NASA hacks from the 1970s and the EU declaring data transfer agreements with the US invalid. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Hello world, I'm Darren Kitchen. This is ThreatWire for October 14th, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security privacy and internet freedom. And we begin today with the beloved yellow HTTPS warning icon in Chrome. Yes, that icon that was previously warning of mixed content where HTTPS sites would also host non-HTTPS material is now phasing out according to a Google security blog. Coming in version 46, Chrome, quote, will mark the HTTPS with minor errors state using the same page icon as the HTTP pages. And this means instead of having that shiny, happy green lock icon of consumer confidence and whale humpback preservation, we will instead get the bland, desolate, why are we still using meat space analogies in the digital world piece of paper icon. The two reasons Google states is that it will give, you know, a better sense of security, which makes sense because HTTPS sites with mixed contents are really only marginally more secure than HTTPS at all, and because it means less icons for consumers to learn. Basically, it's either secure or it's not secure, or it's that broke-ass icon with the red X and the HTTPS crossed through like the humpback whale referenced previously in this script. Go figure. Mad props to France this week as the government's National Agency of Computer Science, or ANSSI, have reported a wicked cool hack against Google Now and iOS Siri that would have an attacker remotely controlling a phone using radio waves from between 6 and 16 feet away. This is so cool. The hack relies on either an Android phone or with Google Now or iOS device with Siri to have a pair of headphones with a microphone plugged in. And, and no, I'm not talking about a Bluetooth headset, but a wired headset. Why? Well, because this is so cool, the headset wire actually acts as an antenna, and the attack is pulled off using, well, get this, GNU radio and a USRP, though I'm sure any software-defined radio would do the trick. And it is just a cool hack because basically they're able to talk to your phone through the wire. Yes, it's ridiculous. It's simple to fix, of course. It's Google, you know, you just disable Google Now or Siri on your lock screen. iOS currently does that by default, uh, or you could start rocking, you know, a headset with a shielded cable, or dig yourself a hole and cover it with mylar and chicken wire. I mean, it's it's really up to you. The authors have a lot more details on the technical stuff in their IEEE paper, though I've yet to find any of the GRC files that would accompany the hack, which would be really nice because I want to try this right now with the hack RF. Anyway, it's awesome research, which actually shows that uh, that was shown off at the hack in Paris over the summer, but it wasn't really getting a whole lot of traction, kind of slipped through the cracks, and you should check out the full Wired article in the show notes. Maybe it's because I just saw The Martian and loved it, or because I'm a NASA junkie at heart, but this Hackaday story having nothing to do with security and privacy caught my eye, and I thought you'd love it too. Basically, it's an account of the NASA hacks and some crafty engineering over 11 days in May following the less than stellar launch of America's first space station, Skylab. I won't spoil the tale, but suffice it to say, we've all been there, we've all had that moment in the hardware store where we realized, well, actually, this tool isn't intended to fix solar panel arrays, but it could probably do the job. Also, just in case you missed it, we had an awesome discussion, uh, myself and Tom Merritt, over on the Daily Tech News show on Tuesday covering the European Union Court of Justice declaring data transfers uh, agreements with the U.S. to be invalid, which has since put a lot of pressure on Facebook uh, and having them go on the privacy offensive, and it could mean a lot of either really good jobs for data center techs in Europe or a lot of strange loopholes and laws and we'll see what happened. Anyway, my eyes on it uh, and it's basically going to be a wonderful fragmented future for the web. Now, before I do go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show on Patreon. If you find value from this and you wanna put some value back into it, Maybe you should give some thought into becoming a Patreon and patreon.com slash threatwire. And we may even be able to feature your adorable pets and fur babies and the like on our next episode. Our plan, of course, is to do this three times a week. Uh, and we're eager to hit that milestone goal uh, with a rotating cast of myself as well as Patrick Norton and Shannon Morris. So I hope you will contribute to help keeping Threatwire coming to you guys completely independent and ad free. And if you can't donate, a like, a subscribe, all of that goes a long way too. Uh, with that, I am Darren Kitchen, and I'll see you on the internet.